and welcome to our successful practice webinar. My name is Clifford Andrews and I'd like to welcome you to my treatment room here in Norwich in the Shiatsu Center and uh, for the next hour we're going to be sharing with you some of our ideas about how we can avoid making mistakes building our practice and the best things we can do to help our practice grow. So first of all, I'm gonna show you some slides. And there's a picture of me and a welcome to this webinar. So let's have a quick look at some of the features of the webinar. Well, there's a chat feature, which is very, very easy to use. So you can just keep in touch with us. And I've got Shakur in the next room in the control center monitoring the chat and she'll be passing any questions over to me later on in the webinar. There's going to be slides taking you through the themes of the webinar um, and handouts. I've got a handout for you. Um, I've got a couple of short videos for you as well um, and we're going to be working for one hour so let's try and keep to that time. There's a lot to do but we should have some fun along the way. Okay, so first of all, I want to tell you a little bit about my story and our philosophy. That's going to be the first theme. Then we're going to think a little bit about conventional marketing. I don't know if you've ever come across any conventional marketing and sales stuff. And we'll have a look at how useful that is to us as Shiatsu practitioners. Um, and then we've kind of combined the five ways we hold back our practice and five ways we can allow our practice to grow. Um, into one worksheet, which we've sent to you, but we've got a copy of it we can send to you later as well, either during the webinar or when the webinar finishes. And then maybe we'll have a, a little word at the end about what to do when you've just got too many clients and you need to kind of control your, uh, control your practice. Okay, so I'd like to share a little bit of my own story with you, which is I was absolutely hopeless at practice management. I mean, I had no idea at all how to do it. Um, but what happened was I came back from studying with Pauline Sasaki um, in America in 1986, and I only had one aim in mind, and that was I wanted to be busy with shiatsu because I knew I had lots and lots of skills that I've got over the five years it took me to develop my shiatsu practice and I just wanted to be busy and I had absolutely really no idea how to do that. So I took it upon myself to study and I did an open university course on small businesses for small businesses. I also spent a lot of money going to very, very expensive courses in London on how to build up your alternative medicine practice. And I tried everything that I was taught. And some of it worked and some of it didn't. Um, so now three decades on and many online courses and lots of working and coaching with people building their practices, um, I'd like to share some of that experience and also some of the experiences of our team um, with you. OK, and the, our philosophy is simple. It's the same philosophy I had when I started this journey, which is we want you to be busy. It's no good having Shiatsu practitioners sitting around without clients because Shiatsu is such a wonderful thing. It's really needed in the world. You need to be fully booked and you need to be working as many with as many clients as you need or want to have as a uh, to create your own successful practice. So that's our philosophy. OK, so now let's have a look at conventional marketing. Okay, You may have or may not come across any conventional marketing uh, courses or books or even webinars, maybe. <laughs> um, and you'll notice they have all their own language, things like sales goals, market segmentation, USP. That's unique selling point, by the way, targets, et cetera, et cetera. And I've always found them a complete turnoff, to be honest. They really don't seem to be what I was looking for at all. OK, so I think as shiatsu therapists, really, we're looking for something completely different. It just doesn't feel right to um, just use all that conventional sales and marketing speak. 
not for us anyway. Okay, so what we do is uh, in our successful practice work, um, which I'll talk a little bit more about later in our workshops and our online course, we don't actually use any marketing and sales language at all. What we do is we develop our practices through energy work techniques, only energy work techniques. And the reason for that we believe is Shiatsu practitioners like doing energy work. So they're gonna like doing these exercises to build their practice. So we've looked at five different topics um, and we had a bit of a brainstorming session with the team to try and think about what are the five most common ways we hold our practice back and the five most important ways that we can bring our practice forwards. And we came up with this list in order, okay? And they are time and energy, your confidence, are you available? Can people find you? Whether you create a positive energy field around your practice. And finally, when you do any practice promotion, do you focus it in the right place or not? Okay. Now we've got a 45 hour in depth online course coming up in March, and we've got one hour together. So we're just going to try and take you through some of these themes. And if you're interested in going deeper, then we'll let you know when the online course comes up. So what we thought we'd do is we're gonna do some energy work um, exercises with you. So you need a piece of paper and some pens. So quickly run and get them if you've forgotten to bring them to the webinar. Um, and uh, what we'll do is we'll take you through some energy work exercises, okay? Uh, as we go through these five topics. Okay, great. So if you're ready. Um, if you haven't got the worksheet, by the way, um, I could um, I could share that with you. Um, so let me just go backstage from the system at the moment, and I'm just going to see if I can share the handout with you. Um, okay. Well, the handout was I, I, I sent the handout by uh, email, so hopefully you will have got that. And at the end of the webinar, I'll make sure I send um, I send one off to you. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's have a look at the first topic. Right, this is what the uh, worksheet looks like. Just a little column for each one, and so you can make your own notes as you go along. Right, okay, so the first one we came up with is how... Uh, first one we came up with is how do we... What's the most common thing that we do to hold back our practice? Well, the first one of all is, do you actually have the time and energy to have any more clients? Are you actually full already? Bearing in mind, you can be full just with one client or two clients. Let me tell you a little story about some coaching I did for someone for their therapy practice. Um, the first thing I did was this, exactly this, got the diary out, said, okay, when are you going to practice? And I went right through the diary, right? Monday, oh no, no, sorry, I can't, I can't, no, I've got, no. Tuesday, uh, no, well, I could, no, no, I can't, Wednesday, and I'm not kidding, we went through the entire week, and there was not one single time slot in the whole week that that person I was mentoring could actually do any clients. So I just said, just take it easy, don't beat yourself up, just relax and just forget about it until you've got enough time and energy to actually book some clients in and then we'll start again. Here's another story, and this is absolutely true. This is uh, when Ohashi started his practice, the uh, Wataru Ohashi, who you may have heard of, Ohashi Atsu. Uh, when he started his first practice, he actually only opened up two slots and he would wait until they were filled up before he would open up any more slots. And he would never book anyone closer than two weeks ahead. He said, oh no, I'm, I'm booked for two weeks. And he would always be booking people ahead. So that's another way of making sure, I guess, that you're always full because if you restrict your amount of clients to a realistic amount, then you will always be full. 
what to do with the rest of your time we'll deal with later on because that's all an energy work thing okay a simple calculation for you to do now right now is i want you to tell me okay or write down how many clients do you treat now in a week how many do you treat okay it could be one two ten fifteen whatever okay write that down okay how many would you like to treat okay how many would you like to treat okay you can write that down i'd like to treat 20. now you have to ask yourself an honest question how many hours in a week do you honestly have to devote to your practice okay how many hours now when you've done that you'll work out your capacity whether you're 50 percent full or 25 percent full or you might find surprise surprise you're 100 percent full already and uh, you don't need to do any more okay but it's always important to come back to that you have to have the time and the energy to open up your practice and uh, to build it otherwise it's just never going to happen practically is never going to happen Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so this is the exercise. Um, I'm gonna send you the PDF slides so you can go through it. The exercise that we've just done. First of all, how many hours do you realistically have? How many clients do you see? And then work out how much, um, how full you are, okay? Yeah, okay, good. So that's stage one of our five stages. And it's the most important thing to start with. Okay, so let's have a look. Right, the second thing that we put on our list, number two, and this comes up with me a lot when I do one-to-one -one, uh, mentoring um, for people building their practice, and that is confidence. Now, that is an issue when you've just graduated, you've got your basic training, you start building your practice, you may not be seeing that many clients. You may actually even be seeing less than you were when you were working in school doing your uh, treatments, okay? So what we recommend you do is we recommend that you make sure that you're practicing, okay? Make sure you're practicing. Let's have a look at the exercise, okay? Now, if you make sure you're practicing, and you can do that by swaps, giving free treatments to family members, whatever it takes to get people in on your futon so that you're keeping your practice going and keeping your confidence level up. Here's a little exercise. Write down all the things that you feel confident in with your shiatsu. Okay, you can just write down two or three, four bullet points. Okay, and then, is there anything that you're not confident in? Okay, so it might be treating specific issues. Um, you might not be confident in other aspects of your technique. And then you've got to think to yourself, well, how am I going to get that confidence? Okay, we all started somewhere. We all started with zero clients and we all built it up. We all had that experience of not being that experienced in our work and having to build our practice up. And ironically, just when you need the confidence right at the beginning is when you're gonna have the least number of clients and the least experience, isn't it? So we've got to make sure that we deal with that issue. So have you got, have you got any ideas of what you can do? Well, I've got a couple that I can think of that might be um, useful, which is, Workshops, make sure you get CPD workshops. Network with the people that you studied with, do swaps with them. Maybe get some one-to-one -one tutorials with a teacher that you like their work. Um, all those kind of things and program them in to make sure you keep your confidence level up. Okay, great. So that's part one, um, topic number one, making sure you have the time and the energy. That's the most important thing. And the second thing is making sure that you're confident. Okay. So now, 
we've got the issue of availability. And we've got a technique, an energy work technique for this that we do on, the, on our courses, which is called the window. How big is your window? How easy do you make it for people to come through that window and into your practice room here, right? To get them to lie down on your futon right here, that's there, okay? Well, we do all kinds of things, consciously and unconsciously, to um, make that little window smaller and smaller and smaller. So no one can find us, no one can find us, and no one can find out where we're working, when we're working, or we can consciously make that window bigger so that if anyone has just even a thought that they want to contact us they can find us okay and that we've got lots and lots of techniques for that let's have a look at the exercise okay yeah so basically you just have to reflect how easy is it for clients to find you well good question you might i want to ask a friend oh just try and book a shiatsu with me, see how hard it is, and get some feedback on that. Now, when I started, there, believe it or not, <laughs> it was a long time ago, and there was no internet, really. There was no internet. It was all done with leaflets, phone calls, mail outs, with labels that you stuck on, and they went <laughs> through the post. Um, but of course, now a lot of um, making that window bigger involves the internet. And I've got a little clip from the video that we're recording for our upcoming online course, Successful Practice course, featuring uh, Nicole. Um, so I'm gonna just share that with you. And, uh, and you can meet Nicole and, and see, what you, see what you think. She's gonna, um, what we did is we actually asked ourselves, what were the five most important social media and internet functions that we should invest in to make our window as big as possible. So let's just listen to Nicole here. Hi, Nicole. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done quite a lot of media work for us, haven't you, for the Shatsi Centre? I have, yes. Yeah. Okay, so why do you think websites are number one? Why are they the most important thing? Well, if you think about what you do naturally when you're looking for anything, you immediately you put, put it into the website, uh, into Google, mm -hmm. and you just look up that person or look up whatever it is and immediately you'll, if you can get a website page and you've got that information that tells you exactly what it's about or where they are, where they're located, it's just the key thing that everyone needs to have these days. It's so basic. Okay, so we had number two on our list was, e was email lists, which is, might be a surprise for some people. So why did we put it so high up, do you think? Well, a lot of people, or most people, are communicating through email now, and um, it's a fantastic way of directly getting to your clients and, and meeting with people that you have seen before and reminding them that you exist and letting them know what your latest offer or your event is um, and what's going on, any updates in terms of new equipment you've got or new training you've had, it's, uh, and you're delivering straight into their lap, into their inbox. Um, so it's a very direct and, um, and creative way of communicating with people now because you can use e-news systems such as MailChimp or MadMimi um, and so you can have images and links to videos and so it's, it's a very live medium and hopefully you will have uh, got those emails from people coming in and having a taste of treatment with you or clients that maybe you haven't seen for a couple of years so it's just uh, reconnecting with a source that you've already made a connection with so it's a really fantastic way of of keeping in touch so there we are that was, uh, that was Nicole and she's one of our team uh, she does pretty much all the new media and social media um, work for us at the Shiatsu Center and she's a kind of an expert in that in that field and she's working with us uh, to create the the new successful online successful practice, but if you're you know maybe you don't want to become massive of course and get everything together, you maybe just a little bit unsure about social media, then at the end of this webinar there's a link to our next free webinar, which is part of a workshop that we're putting together just on social media for shiatsu. So look out for that because that might be like, really useful for you. Okay, so let's have a look at the slides then. Okay, so here we are. 
And that was Nicole talking a little bit about the first two important things that we thought were most important with social media, which was getting a website organized and getting an email list. And you can find out more on the next free webinar about what the other things were on that list, creating a bigger window using social media. And there were some surprises there actually when we did that. <laughs> so look out for that next free webinar. Okay, so here we are. Now the next thing, point four, is creating a positive energy field around your practice. And again, we've got lots of techniques that we can share with you to be able to, so that we can do exactly that, okay? Now, one of them is five cents in your practice, okay? And I thought we'd just have a little break here, like a little five minute, 10 minute meditation, a little break from the slides. Um, so what we'll do is we will um, literally take you through five cents in your practice. And I'm just gonna have a book here. Yeah, here we go. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you a video that we've took with Shakura because Shakura is our um, style queen. <laughs> She works at the Shiatsu Center and she's responsible for the cut, lovely muted uh, neutral colors that you can see behind you. And she constantly five senses the Shiatsu Center practice. So she's kind of our expert on that. And you can meet her in a moment with the um, with this video clip that we've, we've just produced. OK, so what I'd like to do with you now is I'd like you to actually five sense your practice It's going to take about five or 10 minutes to do. You just need a piece of paper. OK and a pen obviously to write down what you experience and it's like a meditation thing okay so what we'll do is we'll first of all just sit comfortably center our energy okay and then you can just close your eyes Let's think about your shiatsu practice and let's think about the visual sense, seeing. Imagine what your, any brochures that you have or your business card looks like, if you've got one, if you haven't, it doesn't matter. Think about what your website looks like, if you have one, if you haven't, it doesn't matter. So these are things that people will see before they actually meet you and see your practice room. Okay, so now imagine you're a new client and you're approaching your shiatsu practice. It might be at home, it might be in a clinic, it might be you turning up in your car if you're doing a home visit. And just Think about or visualize what they'll actually see when they approach your practice. Maybe they're coming up to the front door, opening the front door, coming into reception or hallway, maybe a waiting area. Just in your mind's eye, just think about that. Okay, and then from the reception area or waiting area or the hallway or whatever it is, going into the treatment room, what do they see when they go into the treatment room? Okay, very good. So now take a piece of paper and just write some bullet points of all the things that you think are really positive about what they've seen and then on the other side of the paper, maybe write one or two bullet points that you would like to change. Is there anything you'd like to change about what your clients see as they experience your practice?
Okay. Very good. So now we go down to the next thing, which is hearing. Okay. And here I'll tell you a little story. We used to have a lot of problems with street noise. Sometimes it was nice. It was kind of like a burbling noise in the background, but sometimes it would be really loud. And uh, so we've got double glazing now in this room, um, which makes it very, very quiet. Um, and it took us quite a long time to get that organized because it was quite a big investment, but it's been really amazing. Okay. So let's uh, just close your eyes for a second. Imagine your client going into your practice. What kind of sounds would they hear? Is there a squeaky door? Is there an annoying buzzer or bell? Or is there any noise involved in walking up the stairs? And then take them into your treatment room and just get them to relax. And then imagine what kind of sounds they'll hear as you do the treatment. Okay, that's great. And then open your eyes and you just put down a few bullet points under the hearing section. Anything you'd like to change straight away or in the future. Okay, great. So now let's go for the sense of smell. Again, closing our eyes, imagining going into our treatment room or into the practice. What kind of smells are they likely to experience? Yeah. For example, what kind of cleaning products do you use? Do you have any natural scents in the bathroom? That kind of thing. Okay, and just write those down under smell. Okay, now, what about taste? Now, just out of interest, that's the only um, sense that isn't really taken care of just by coming in having a shiatsu. So what we do is we serve a small cup of herb tea. Um, we just use rosehip tea um, and we have a flask of hot water and we make it up. And I've heard from other clients who've had shiatsu in Japan that sometimes practitioners bring a whole tray of like little snacks and <laughs> green tea and things. We haven't gone that far, we don't have a kitchen, but we do um, supply tea. And not everyone likes it. So sometimes we'll just give them water. We've got a water filter to make sure the water tastes really nice. And uh, we've also done quite a lot of work on the tea as well, timing it, making sure that it's the right temperature so it's not too strong um, and things like that. So <laughs> that's the um, sense of taste. Okay, so now the last bit of meditation is the sense of touch. So let's just close our eyes again, just one more time and imagine the sensation of touch. Now, you can start off with thinking of the, any leaflets or cards you have. What do they feel like? That's an important thing. What's it like to open the door handles and just touch anything like the rails or anything as they move through the building? Okay, and then what about the chairs they sit on? And of course, finally, the futon is really important. And if you use cloths or sheets as we do, what kind of sensation do they have? Okay, so there we go. Okay, so you can just write that down, the sense of touch. 
And maybe it be now is a good time to just check out this short video clip. Um, Shakur has done quite a lot of videoing for us for the upcoming online course about uh, five sensing and other aspects about sending out positive energy um, for your practice. And here's just a tiny little um, sample of that. So let's just see Shakura in the um, practice room. Okay, so I'm going to come into the mat, Shakura. So welcome. welcome Thank to you the very much. Room. This, is, this is the futon mm -hmm. that we work on, which is a nice balance between a futon mm -hmm. and a piece of sponge. So then, like you experience, it's comfortable, soft, but it doesn't give way too much for when no. we're working. Do you want to have a lie down? Thank you. Our clients always have their head on some hygiene roll, which is a paper roll we have here in the centre, which um, gets uh, recycled, uh, thrown away each time in the recycling bin. And then, we, whenever we're working on their face or on their body, we work through cloth. So we work through uh, face cloth on their face and head, and then an Egyptian cotton sheet when working on the rest of their body. And then when it's appropriate, we use woolen blankets to keep them warm. It feels kind of warm as well. Yeah, so our other little trick we have here at the center is to have an electric blanket underneath the sheet so it keeps their body temperature cozy throughout the treatment. Mm, great. It's nice to actually feel it myself. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah great. That was Shakur, she's another one of our team, and she's been doing some videoing, as I said, um, for the upcoming successful practice pr practice course. Um, and as you can see, she's really good at choosing things that provide a nice sense of touch for the clients. And of course, we've got the ultimate form of touch, which is um, <laughs> the shiatsu technique, haven't we? So that's gonna be a major part of any kind of experience that that, that people have um, when they come for shiatsu. So yeah, that's really, really great. Okay, so now let's see what we've got. Um, all right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pause for a moment because there's a lot of uh, stuff going on in the chat. I'm just gonna have a quick look and just respond to some of that, um, yeah. We obviously, when we go into email list, in fact, if you sign up for the news uh, for the next free webinar on social media at the end of this uh, webinar, we will obviously go through the whole legal um, and etiquette of email lists because, as um, several people have posted up um, about um, uh, Etheline and um, Bianca's made some comments. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, one of the most important things is what's called like a double opt-in, which basically means that people have to really make sure they absolutely want to be um, subscribed to an email list. And uh, there are different ways of setting that up. Um, what you don't want to do, and this, well, what you tend to do at the beginning, what one tends to do at the beginning is just get all one's contacts from my mailing list, you know, in our contacts and email to them. And that is kind of a really bad idea because that counts as spam and that is not a good thing. And people really, really don't like it. Um, I mean, I think they can, um, I think if they're close friends, you can ask them, actually phone them up and say, hey, I'm starting a newsletter. Would you like to be on it? I think that'd be a really good idea. So you can start with a few people. Um, but what you really need is you need a way of collecting emails that's completely um, legal and also has the right etiquette. Because as I say, people, I'm sure you know what it's like if you get spammed emails, you really don't want to do it. And in fact, from the point of view of new energy work, we spent, well, actually, I spent quite a lot of uh, the Christmas and New Year holiday when I wasn't with my family learning a whole system that we're investing in to make sure that we don't spam you and we only send you emails that you that you want um obviously our list is completely clean everyone on, on our list is actually like um double opted in and we have unsubscribe options on every single email so if people want to unsubscribe which some people do then they're going to go and that's fine um, but on top of that we don't want to send you stuff 
inviting you to things you've already joined and all that kind of thing. And, and to do that, that requires another whole level of, of software, which you don't really need as a Shiatsu practitioner. You can, you can make do with a very simple system. Um, and um, Nicole has got a load of experience with Mad Mimi and, uh, and MailChimp, which are common ones, how to set them up. So you can, everything can be cool with the emails. It's going to be fine. Okay. Um, so yeah. So if you've got any questions, I see some more questions coming in about specific things about uh, social media, then uh, maybe you could ask them uh, on the next webinar if it's a really technical thing. But we'll have a look. We're going to allow like 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the end for questions anyway. And we can look down and uh, see in the chat if there's anything that we haven't, uh, haven't answered. Okay, so that's cool. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> email lists made it second on our list and it's caused quite a lot of stir in the chat already so there we go i hope you enjoyed that video shakura um and uh let's go on to number five shall we okay focusing your energy okay now <clears throat> this kind of links with point one which is do you have any energy to have any more clients or any time <laughs> Now, this is uh, what often happens. Okay, I'm gonna work one day. I one, I'm gonna work like maybe one day a week, two days a week for Shiatsu. Um, so then what do you do? Okay, what are you gonna do? Well, what happens to a lot of people is they look in the diary and they see they haven't got any shiatsu clients or they've only got one or two booked in. They think, oh, wait a minute, I'll go and do some shopping or, or I've got to go and clean the fridge out or, you know, whatever. And so that just takes up the whole day and nothing's happened. Okay. This is the single most valuable piece of information or hint that we can give you from our experience if you want to build your practice. And this, and it, and it is this, okay, everyone? <laughs> what the most important thing to do, if you seriously want to grow your practice, right, is this. Commit yourself to the time, the amount of time that you have to do shiatsu and the amount of clients you want. So if you want to do one day a week, that's fine. Half a day a week, two days a week, whatever it is, okay? Block those two weeks out in your diary and don't let anything go into that time except working on your shiatsu. And that could be doing a swap to get up your confidence, doing a tutorial, doing an online course, <laughs> watching a YouTube video, okay? But more importantly, really, is applying some energy work techniques to get your clients to come to you. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that is made when, uh, when new practitioners start to commit to that time is what we call the pyramid. <clears throat> if you imagine there's a pyramid and at the bottom, you have just your clients that you've actually got, okay? The actual clients that you have, the client you saw last, that's the foundation of your practice. The next step up is all the shiatsu, um, shiatsus you've ever done, all of the clients you've done, going back in time. So the ones last week, the ones three months ago, the ones you haven't seen for a year or two. Those, that's the next layer of the pyramid, okay? And then one step up from that is all the people that your clients know that may want a shiatsu. And then above that, you have things like the same interest groups. So maybe yoga group or qigong group. And then finally, at the top, you have the general public. Now, one of the things, and I've heard this happen to people so many times, what they do is they think, right, okay, I'm going to build my practice. Um, and so I'm going to get all these leaflets printed. I'm going to put them out and I'm going to put them out like in every door, you know, and they, they put out hundreds. They might spend a lot of money doing that and nothing comes back. 
we'll make it one with hundreds and hundreds of leaflets. And that's because they're focusing their energy at the wrong place of the pyramid. They're focusing it at the top, not at the bottom. OK, so what we recommend you do is, first of all, focus all your initial energy on the clients that you're treating now. So look after your clients. I mean, I know you're going to do that anyway, but just go the extra mile. You know, think of exercises that you can send them. Maybe do them, maybe um, create some sort of links for them um, to videos of exercises they can do. This is something I do, create audio for them. I do that as well. Anything that can just add extra to your clients and really, really look, really, really look after them. Because the thing is, if you do an amazing job with your client, the best way of getting other people in is they're just going to go away and they're going to tell everyone they meet, oh, I went and had this incredible experience in Shiatsu. And it was just amazing. And they'll feel that energy and it will spread out. OK, so that's the first thing. Focus on the bottom of the pyramid. Now, the next thing, if you've got any time after that, you want to make sure that you've got your email list sorted. OK, and it's all cool and legal and double opted in and everything's fine. And if you're not using an email list, if you're like back where I, where I was in the 80s and you've got just a name and address list, print the labels out, send out some newsletters. Retro is good. Retro is cool. It could be a unique thing that you don't use email, that you use cards. It's just more expensive to do. But what you're going to be doing then is that putting energy into those clients who have been before. The chances are, as you build your practice, that quite a few clients are going to be pretty much waiting to call you. Um, they probably had a treatment like a couple of months ago, and they're probably thinking, oh, I could really do with another shiatsu, you know, and, but they've got so busy and, you know, things are going on and they never get around to it. They get a note from you through the post or an email or an email newsletter, and it's just that trigger. They'll pick the phone up and lo and behold, you'll make contact again because it's all about making contact. Now, once you've done those first two layers, the chances are that you're not really going to have much time left, especially as you start getting busier more quickly. Um, when I started out way back in the 80s and I did all these courses and I had all these ideas, which we're going to share with you in the longer in the longer courses, I had all these ideas. I just did everything and I averaged two new clients um, a week for the first year. And that is really, really unusually high. Just to give you some idea, the average of build average for building a practice, assuming that you do all the right things and you follow all our advice, the average is filling one day of clients per year. So it does take time. I mean, if you think of it's going to take, if you want to work five days a week, not many people do, but if you wanted to work five days a week, you've got to look at about five years um, to build up that practice okay um, what you'll find is that you'll get monthly you've got you'll get monthly clients or maybe every six week clients and they'll start to fill up your your diary I mean on a personal note um, my I release my diary now one year ahead and something like 85 percent of my appointments get booked up for the entire year ahead um, and I have had times in the 90s, the late 90s, where my entire diary would be completely filled as soon as I opened it up. And that happened for three years. And I couldn't take any new clients, OK, for three years. So that was kind of you know tough in a way because it's nice to have some new clients coming in. And then I had to think about how to restrict it. But that's another thing we'll come to later. OK, so remember that. Remember the period. Where are you putting your energy? Most people don't do that right. They waste a lot of energy and money and everything at the top of the pyramid. They get very, very dispirited. Um, and, you know, it's something we don't really want you to do. OK. So, OK, so that's the five points. And we've got 15 minutes left for questions, which is exactly what we were planning. So, so good. So far, so good. Um, OK, so now I just want to talk about the final thing. Let's just review. We've got. My story, I was hopeless, absolutely hopeless. I knew nothing and I had to find out and I did lots and lots of very expensive courses and some of it worked and some of it didn't. Um, 
but that's my story. And our philosophy is we want shiatsu people to be busy. It's as simple as that. We want more shiatsu in the world. And we don't want shiatsu practitioners making classic mistakes and holding back their practice. And that's what we want to that's what we want to share this with you. OK, we've been through the five ways we can hold back our practice. And the converse of that is how we can allow practice to grow. OK, so what did I do then when I had this period where I was just overbooked for like a year ahead? What I did was I basically put everything into reverse. I stopped ca I stopped take, uh, carrying a business card with me. I didn't mention anything about doing shiatsu. I kept everything really quiet. I restricted everything down. I stopped taking on new clients and slowly I created a bit more room in my practice. So all these techniques can be adjusted. If you want to grow your practice faster and you have got the energy and the time, okay, then you can do that by just applying these techniques. And these energy work techniques are not hard. They are nowhere near as hard as learning how to do shiatsu. If you know how to do shiatsu, you're not going to have any problem at all doing the stuff. It's just knowing what to do and how to do it. That's all and what not to do. OK, great. So let's just have a look and see what we've got um, in the um, chat zone. Um, OK, so Bianca's mentioned this. What do you mean by con contacting existing clients? Isn't this showing dependence on them? Well, not really, no, because the thing is, it's not it's not really a dependency thing. It's really a question of off of reminding the, them that you're there. I mean, the thing is, that's one thing also I, I have to say that is really important. And I learned this by um uh learned this by practical experience. The one thing that I've never done, I've only ever done it once. Actually, the one thing I've always tried never to do, and that is to hang on to clients because I needed the clients. I only did it once. And this was back in the early 80s that I booked someone in because I needed one more client that week or whatever. So I suggested they came in. And because it didn't come from a place of integrity, I felt so bad about that that I've never repeated it. So now. So that's a really important thing. I. In fact, my philosophy is I try and get my clients to become less dependent on me. I try to actually make them self-sufficient as quickly as I can. And then if they choose to come back for regular treatments, which some people do, you know, I have quite a lot of monthly appointment. I have some clients who are very, who are quite, you know, seriously ill, who come every week or every two weeks because they need that input um, because they've got chronic health problems. Um, and I've got clients who come back maybe every three months. Okay, and obviously I'm not going to stop them because I believe that shiatsu is a useful maintenance thing and it's important for people to come on a maintenance level. But what I don't do is I don't book people in because I want the work. And I've, what I've found is the more you push clients out on their own, the bigger your practice will grow because they respect that, they will spread the word and you'll get more clients. So there we are. Oh, look, Barbara says that Hashi said he contacts his clients after three days, three weeks, three months, and then three years. Well, that's a good little guide then, isn't it, from the master? <laughs> yeah, that sounds that sounds about right. I mean, if you've got the time and you can follow up your treatments, that's a cool thing. I mean, I, I do ask my clients to contact me if they have any healing reactions and things like that. Um, but I don't know. Um, they often don't. <laughs> They often don't. What 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 they'll do is they'll come in a week or two weeks or three weeks or a month and they go, oh, I felt terrible for three days after the chat. So I was going to call you, but I never got round to it. Um, but then I felt okay. Then I felt much better. And that's a typical thing. So follow up follow up calls are good. I mean, if you've got the time, it's again at the bottom of the pyramid there that they are useful to do. If you get a client, by the way, who does call you up, and that's happened to me, maybe three or four times in all these years that I've been working, I've had clients actually call me up and say, I've had this really strong reaction. I'm in a lot of pain. And, you know, what I do is I immediately get them back into the, into the practice. I get them into here um, and I get them in my lunch break, whatever, as an emergency, I get them in and I give them a free treatment or a free mini treatment. I find out what's going on. Usually you can tell from the meridians what's going on. It's 
quite often the liver um, release. Um, you can reassure them. You can do any corrective work to just smooth it out for them. And I'll do that free. That's only happened to me three times uh, in all these years. But that's an, another good thing to look help you um, help you in looking after your clients because uh, it's at those critical times that they really need um, the they really need the the, the um, yeah the support. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's have a look back and see. If they've got any other chat questions here that I can go. Uh, marketing shiatsu alongside other complementary therapies. What do you think? Well, it depends, doesn't it? Depends how where you're working. I mean, if you're working in a multidisciplinary clinic where you've got different modalities, um, then sure. I mean, if that fits the, where you're working, that can be fine. Um, most people who work with shiatsu will probably have their own their own uh, kind of leaflet or something that they'll they'll use. Um, let's just see if we've got anything else. If there's any other questions, just let me have them. We've got uh, just over just less than ten minutes left. Um, <clears throat> I'm just having a quick look back. <clears throat> there's a certain amount of discussion about whether to serve food to your clients. Well, we don't have a kitchen, so we can't do that. <clears throat> but they do it in Japan, apparently. Um, Anyone else want to ask any questions on the chat? Right, okay. Let's see. Okay, cool. Will there be new materials in a new course? I found your online course hugely useful three years ago. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Yeah, we we have run online courses before on the old platform, but this is a completely new video-based course with loads more um, resources. Um, and also, if you have been on our courses before, we'll, we'll let you know what it's like. You can have a look around and see that. Um, okay, Alan asks, um, oh, yeah, as a student, giving free treatments, yeah, clients often ask how long they should leave it before coming back. And that is a difficult question to deal with. It really is. Um, basically, what the way I approach it is this. If I have a new client and they have got some quite serious symptom, it's not just a maintenance thing or just a kind of relaxation thing, then what I'll recommend is they come back within a week, although quite the problem with my diary now is I can't often get them in for a month or three weeks now, but ideally I try and get them in a week later or at the maximum two weeks. And the reason for that is because, as um, we just found out from Ohashi, three days is a good amount of time. Because that's usually when the initial reactions of the treatment have reached a peak. So if you can get them in, in a week, you'll, they will have gone through the initial reactions and they'll just be starting to integrate it in. Then what I do is I, I tell them what I do is my aim is to get you as self-sufficient as quickly as possible. So if they're in a lot of discomfort and they need more input, I will book them in for another week. But what I'll do is aim to spread that out as quickly as possible. So if they then become, say, pain free for a week, a whole week, then we'll stretch it out to two weeks and then we stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch it out. And then it's up to them. Then some clients won't come back for sometimes they, I don't see them again for years, decades. Um, and other clients choose to have monthlies or three monthlies or whatever. But I leave that up to them. So that's a delicate balance between giving guidance and also handing it back to them. And as soon as I feel that they're getting a feeling for what Shiatsu can do for them, supported by any exercises that I've given them, I'll then say, well, what do you, how do you feel about it? What do you think? And they'll say, well, do you know, I think I'll be okay every six weeks now. And sometimes the client will have that as a name. So that's, uh, you know, that's it. Um, so it's really up to the client. I mean, there's quite a lot of discussion going in the chat. I'll just catch up with it. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Bianca thinks twice. A, yeah. I mean, I I very rarely give shiatsu more than twice in one week because the thing is it takes a, at least a week for a shiatsu to, especially if they're in the initial stages, for it to settle in anyway. So it's usually a bit too much for people um, to, to do that. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, so here we've got we've got a couple of um, a couple of another comments. We've got um, Sarah, 
uh, how do you determine your price range? Right, we've got a whole <laughs> we've got a whole module on that um, because it's very important, and there are all kinds of different types of pricing and how to do it and stuff like that. But my simple recommendation is this: is just find out what acupuncture costs in your area at your level of experience, and don't charge less. It's as simple as that. Because shiatsu is basically as good as acupuncture. As far as I'm concerned, it's better for some clients. Um, and also we have a similar level of training. Um, it's up to you. You have to be comfortable with what you're charging, but there are dangers to undercharging. Um, and that's another really, um, something that's really worth some serious study. And as I say, we have a whole module on that, on pricing um, in, the, in the full online course. So yeah. Okay, let's see, have we got any more questions? We're coming up with very close to the end now. Um, thank you so much for all of the chat questions. Alison, thanks Alison. The pyramid process was excellent. Yeah, good, I'm glad you like that. That's, I found that useful myself. Um, my little story I had, I, I actually moved to Italy for four years and I was practicing, I still have a practice in Zurich actually. Um, I was practicing in, at one point I was practicing in Siena, Rome, Zurich, Brighton and Norwich. That was not a good idea, spreading myself that thin. Um, but I came back and uh, I had to build my practice up again from just four or five days a month because uh, I've been commuting from Italy. And that was in 2011. So I had the, I had the experience of having to build the practice up again. Um, and I used my own techniques, the ones we use in our own courses. And I just, I did exactly that. I looked after every client more than I, would do normally because I had the time. I said extra support, extra exercises. Um, and I do you know what I didn't even have to call up one single person. I didn't have to go any further up that pyramid. And just the word got out. Admittedly, I had obviously been practicing for a long time here. Um, but it really does work. It's definitely the best way. And it's the most um, it's the most uh, sincere thing from your heart to just give more as much as you can to all of your clients. So Okay, great. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, Bianca says don't underprice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. When you fin when this webinar finishes, we've we've got it sorted so that you should be taken straight to a link. Um, if not, we'll send you a, an email out um, to the, for the next webinar. Um, and you can always go on to newenergywork dot com and we've got redesigned the site recently to make it easier for you to find stuff we've got new things coming up we've got uh, workshops which are like little 10-day intensive masterclass type things um, if you don't want to do a full course and we've also got this is mainly for people who have studied with us we've got some um, online video link supervisions coming up we've been asked for that um, like video link supervisions for your work like very small groups eight people in a group so look out for those Okay, great. We've only just got a minute and a half left. Let's see if there's anything coming in. People are saying how much they enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you for all your messages. They're coming so fast, I can't even read them all. Um, Karen, Natasha, Ramita, hi there. Bianca again, Vivian, Gisela, Anna Maria, Joanna, Andrea. Alan, I can't read them, they're all coming and that's really great. It's really nice to see so many people uh, enjoying the webinar. Yeah, so we're actually having quite a lot of fun working as a team. Um, we've got a really good setup here, as you can see, we've got lights, we've got a really nice camera and a microphone. And so we're producing um, high quality videos and we're putting our minds together to try and help you develop your successful practice. Um, because as we've said before in the webinar, we believe shiatsu is great and we think all shiatsu practitioners are you know should be working and we it, it, it hurts us when people aren't because they make simple mistakes very simple mistakes um in their practice management and there's no need for it <laughs> it can be fun <laughs> and uh so great so i hope to see you at the next webinar and uh, yeah thanks for being with us it's the we had a uh, over 300 people sign up for this webinar. It's the biggest one we've had so far. So thank you very much and hope to see you soon on another free event or one of our workshops or online courses.